Aries. I hope everybody is doing fantastic. Um, again, hope everybody is doing well. I'm going to shuffle these. As you know, I like to add a little uh, energy before we get started, but I always, always pre-shuffle. Listen, Aries, um, I didn't get your readout last month. You were the only sign, and I have to tell you why. I have to tell you that um, I recorded your sign first. Shoot, these cards are like falling all over the place. Um, ooh, I recorded your sign first. And the video had no sound. Then I recorded your video last, and the video was almost like it had been spliced. So very interesting. I generally won't push it if the universe is giving me some sort of sign or, um, you know, telling me not to rock the boat. So one of my favorite people and closest friends is an Aries. He is also in a band. Um, you know, has done a lot of things in his life creatively. And the reason I'm bringing this up is he and I spoke and he said, I haven't seen my sign come out yet. And I said, no, um, I've been trying, but for some reason it's just not happening. And I don't know, you know, what that's about, but you know, I'm debating on just pushing it and making it happen. And he said, don't. And I said, okay. And he reasoned and he said, well, my mom died. So, not that I was doing it for him, obviously, but I kind of felt like maybe it was a month many of you just didn't want to think about. I don't know. I could be completely wrong. I'm sure a lot of you will tell you, a lot of you will tell me I'm ridiculous or whatever the case, but I wanted to let you know it's very interesting. Normally, I will make it happen no matter what, and I promise Aries going forward I will, but it was very interesting how I kept continuing to try and make things happen, and they just were not happening. Um... And you kind of get to the point where you're like, okay, you know, I get it. Whoever's trying to tell me what's going on, I get it. So here's the thing. Um, yeah, I'm really hoping that none of you experienced what my friend did, but it just all kind of came together that way. And I just felt like maybe I'd leave it with a clean slate. So um, that being said, as you know, I move pretty quick. I have a lot to say and a lot I want to get out. And my cat might join us here in a second because she is coming over the table, which is also very strange, Aries. There's a very interesting poll I have for you right now. Um, I mean, my cat doesn't usually come over during my readings, but she just took an interest in nothing on the table. <laughs> so anyways, um, not to mention that I've started this read twice already. Um, I don't know, Aries. I think maybe it's your time. Something dynamic is revolving around you. So as you know, like I said, I move pretty fast. I have a lot to say, and I don't want to take up too much of your time. This intro is probably the longest I've ever recorded, I'm taking up more of your time, right? Uh, is always check your sun, moon, and rising because those may resonate with you some months more than others will. Um, any likes, comments, subscribes, etc. Always appreciated. Donation and private read information is at the bottom. Um, again, this is general, but as I've said the past few months, I'm focusing on singles and anybody looking to reconcile. Those seem to be the people who message me, the people who request private reads, etc. So those tend to be the people that are seeking my uh, reads. So those are the people I'm going to obviously cater them to. Um, you know, I appreciate you hanging in there with me. So let's get started. We always pull the card, your position coming into the month. And you have death, which just gives me chills all together. Now, don't take this seriously as in death, because death is not death in a literal sense. In fact, death is one of my favorite cards, um, because this means new beginnings, rebirth, uh, transformation. Death means endings as well. So if you're single, this tells me that either you're looking for an ending to your dry spell, you haven't been dating at all, and you've decided that you're going to kind of end that and start to date and start to get back out there. Um, this also tells me that you've changed some things about yourself. Maybe you've transformed. Maybe you've taken the past few months to just heal, become a better person and heal. I don't know why that came into play. So it does tell me that maybe some of you have been going through some personal things, or maybe you have been dealing with, um, you know, your own inside turmoil. Maybe it's, you know, a depression or anxiety, things like that. And you're coming to grips with it and you're feeling you know, better, reborn. You're taking care of yourself better. Um, 
this is, you know, you're starting over. And so maybe you finally gotten closure. You got the death to something in the past that you needed to, as far as relationships or things that allowed you to move on and be single again and try again. Uh, it could be something as simple as, you know, you hated online dating, so you've changed every way you're going to go about meeting people and it's going to have nothing to do with online dating. For some of you, it very well could be the case of transforming how you're meeting people, transforming the way you're thinking about it, transforming the way you're going about it. Um, for singles, this tells me that you're ready for a new beginning. You're ready for new, um, a new life. You're just ready to breathe again and get out there again and be you. And maybe that's the other thing, you know, the transformation has been within you. You finally figured out what you want or what you're looking for. Um, again, you could be overcoming something. I hope it's not anything as tragic as my friend, but that stuff happens, right? For anybody looking reconcile, unfortunately, this would tell me almost immediately that there's probably changes, that this is an ending. And some of you are probably going, yeah, I saw that coming. Yeah, I know this. You don't need to tell me that. But you're watching because you were kind of wondering anyways, right? Um, the one good thing I would say is there is a glimmer of hope and the fact that it's about rebirth. So if maybe, and I kind of feel like, honestly, Aries, if you're wondering about your ex or if you're wondering about reconciliation, maybe it's been a while. So maybe like a long while six, eight, you know, months, I don't know, two years is all of a sudden ringing the bell that you're coming and going, I wonder what that person's up to. Or maybe they contacted you. And so there is a chance for some sort of rebirth. Maybe you haven't been dwelling on, would we get back together? Cause you've been doing your own thing. And all of a sudden something came into play and you're kind of like, huh, hmm, maybe they're missing me or maybe you're missing them. We'll see what happens going forward. But all right, the next card you have is um, any challenges often internal that help or hinder your position coming into the month. And you have the King of Wands. So you start out the month with big changes or transformations, rebirths, and then you head to the King of Wands, which is, again, internal, how you're feeling. And this is inspiration. So these kind of go really well together because this is, I mean, the King is ethics and leadership and being bold. So this definitely tells me if you're single, you've transformed something about you. Maybe you've lost weight. Maybe you've, you know, changed just your vibe. Maybe you're being positive when you were generally more of a negative Nelly, or this tells me that you're kind of going out and saying, here I am. I'm capable of a lot of things. I'm going to date and I'm holding myself to a moral standard and I have ethics, I'm not looking for, you know, one night stand. I mean, if you are, and that's your thing, then fine. But it's like, you're holding yourself to a higher standard and therefore other people are going to hold you like to a higher standard too, if that makes sense. Not in a cocky or conceited way, but if you are not, if you're setting the precedent of, Hey, if you message me asking me what color underwear I have on today, or, you know, how big my package is, excuse me for getting graphic, um, then I'm not interested and I'm not even going to entertain it. Next, next, next. So you're holding yourself to a higher standard. So others are going to mimic that and hire, hold you to a higher standard, or you're going to weed out the bullshit in the first sentence of being like, Hey, screw off. That's not how you can treat me or talk to me. And for singles, I get this vibe. That's just like, I know what I want. And I'm not going to be like, Hey, you have to fit this perfect mold. And you have to be this like cookie cutter, whatever. It's more, I'm not dealing with your bullshit and you're not going to push me around. And I have higher standards than this. And maybe this transformation of feeling better about yourself and taking your self worth into account and making changes and ending toxic people having the availability to affect your life is bringing this boldness and this king mentality in your life because you're able to say, you know what? I deserve more and you feel it from the inside out and it's going to reflect. And that's super important because I have been in that dating cycle and I have been through the ups and downs of all of that crap. And you kind of get beat down. Like, is this the best I'm going to get? Like, do I really have to play along with this crap? No, you don't. And Aries has seemed to figure that out because that's what these cards are telling me. If you're looking to reconcile, 
I feel like this boldness is coming from within almost the same as for singles where you're with your ex kind of going, you know, I could take it or leave it. Like if you hit back and you want to see what I'm up to, you know, actions speak louder than words. What do you bring to the table? What are you doing to inspire me? I'm inspiring myself right now. I'm feeling great, looking great. And what do you bring to the table? You're not being cocky. Again, this isn't like a conceited Aries. This is more of like taking care of yourself and backing yourself up. You know, having your own back for a change instead of feeling like, well, maybe that's the best I could get. Bullshit. Move on. If they're not treating you the way you want to be treated, give them another chance to shape up or ship out and then be done. Doesn't that get tiring after a while? I was telling another sign that one of my friends said something that resonated with me so much and I felt like telling everybody about it. And it goes along with this, that she said to me one time with an ex and he came back and we were going to reconcile and I thought I missed him, everything about him. And she looked at me and she said, are you kidding me? You are smart. You work hard. You have a good career. You bust your butt for your kiddo. What are you doing going back to this guy? And I said, well, I don't really care about it. She said, no, you're taking the easy way out. You're a coward. And I'm like, what? I can't believe you just, she says, no, because it was, it's easier to get back with him, even though you know that it may not be the best solution for you, even though you know in your gut that maybe he's not the right person for you. It's easier to do that than to spend more time alone, hoping and wondering whether you're going to meet somebody incredible. So just keep that in mind. It doesn't mean that you're better than anybody, but use your time wisely, right? The next card you have is your distant past. So over the next few months, or sorry, over the last few years, I don't know why I said this, um, I knew it was a five of cups. Great, that's not over the next few months because that's not a very positive card. That's over the last few years. This is distant. So I always bring up the distant relationship um, spot, which most readers do. My explanation for it, which I've been telling everybody the past month or two, is that you always want to kind of recognize traits or, or things that from your past every month that possibly could be um, influencing or affecting how you're feeling about this new possibility or the dating scene or things that you don't want to let get in your way, if that makes sense. So it's always good to remember the past and every month. And every month, ew, I don't know what that was. Maybe that's what my cat was interested in coming on the table. But every month, um, you know, you there could be traits that are sneaking up on you or things that you're not recognizing that you're going back into those traits. So I always look at this card and talk about it for anybody looking to reconcile and anybody who's single together. So I group it together. The Five of Cups is about loss, solitude, um, sadness, grief. So this, the, the basic core of this means don't get wrapped up in that sadness or that grief. Don't let it take over this power that you're feeling right now. This vivaciousness, this amazing self, um, this commitment to change and be a better you and feeling that from the inside out. So I really feel like the five is showing as don't be this. Don't be that sad. Don't be this wondering what was going on with these people in the past. Don't be wondering what, yeah, just don't. It's grief. It's lonely. And I think you know that and you feel this and maybe you've been carrying that for a long time. And you know, there was love there at one point with a past relationship or past life. I mean, this is also grief of, it could be, somebody who passed and maybe, you know, God forbid what my friend went through, maybe that's something that you're dealing with, or maybe there's an anniversary of a death, or maybe, you know, something's coming up that's triggering, triggering those emotions. And I feel like for some of you, it was really hard and you had a really terrible time and it brought you into a deep depression and loneliness and fear and isolation of you know, never being happy again, whether it was a parent who died, whether it was a sibling who died, whether it was, you know, a husband or wife or an ex lover who died, it brought you to a point that was almost irreconcilable, irreconcilable, you know, you were inconsolable, excuse me. 
and therefore you felt your lowest of low. And so it's almost like you're feeling so good here, but you're waiting for the other shoe to drop, if that makes sense. Like, well, there's gotta be something bad coming because it can't be this good, but it can be this good. So just don't let this crush your spirit. It's a reminder of where you don't want to go back to. The next card you have is your recent past, so over the past few weeks, maybe the past month or two, and you have the Six of Coins. And the Six of Coins is about contentedness and feeling charitable and feeling generous. So if you're single, I think you're starting to feel like a heavy burden is lifted, that you're okay with being single. You're okay with being you. You're okay with finding somebody special and you're almost like content in your heart and therefore you're willing to open it up and bring somebody into that feeling of okayness and I know that sounds weird saying okayness because don't we want to say wonderful and amazing but I kind of feel like Aries just needs to feel like okay they need to feel like I'm good everything's good it doesn't have to be hunky-dory it doesn't have to be you know a million times ten it it's okay to be in a spot where I say, hey, things are fine. Things are good. Things are right where they should be. And I kind of feel like that's what you've been spending the last few weeks, the past few months, you know, a month or two getting to. And again, there could be an anniversary of a death or something could have happened last month, um, you know, or the month before that was almost tragic, but you are able to say, okay, stuff happens, but you know, I've got to take care of me and I still have to move on. I still have to push through and I still have to persevere. And if you're single, you're okay with opening your heart up again. There might be days where you're feeling a little timid, where you're feeling a little cautious, which always, I mean, gosh, today's dating world is crazy, right? So why wouldn't you be cautious? I mean, you got to be really careful sometimes. It's amazing at how you know, susceptible we are to being open with our pictures and, you know, all of this other stuff. And I feel like Aries is just saying, okay, I'm ready to open my heart. I'm feeling generous about giving my attention. And it's like, you've been closed off and you're not willing to trust or to be loved or love again. And now you're saying, baby steps, but I'm getting there. I'm feeling a little more generous with my attention. I'm feeling a little more generous with my heart, but I'm not giving it to you. You still have to earn it. And if you're looking to reconcile, this tells me almost that some of you might be like the two year or whatever I was talking about, where they could be coming from a long time ago. And you always had a little place in your heart for them. It's not like you kept the door wide open. You weren't expecting them to waltz in at any time they wanted, but this would tell me that you're feeling giving as far as if they want to have a conversation. Maybe it was heartbreak for you. It was that unconsolable, and this could relate back to the grief. And so you're trying to keep yourself from going back to the pain you experienced and you know, having to go through those times and nurture yourself back into you know, allowing yourself to be loved again. And now you're kind of like, okay, you know, I always knew that I had a little place in my heart for them. Maybe some of you even knew that you would reconnect or that the connection was so strong that you wanted to go back there at one point. So I feel like you're being generous in the fact that if they contacted you or wanted to get back in touch with you and there's my cat again, I apologize. Um, she's a sweetheart though. So if you want to get back in touch with them or they want to get back in touch with you, although I kind of feel like they're the ones who are going to instigate it, you're going to feel generous with your time, not your heart necessarily. I feel like it's not even there and you're probably going, okay, dark up, like, whoa, we're not even there. But if they said hello, I might say hello back. I might entertain that. If you want to, great. If you don't, cut it off because I smell trouble if you pussyfoot around it. The next card you have is your distant future. So over the next few weeks, over the next few months, and you have the page of swords, which I actually like. Um, this is writing your own story. So this is about seeking, telling your story, writing your own story. This is about um, learning. This is about truth. And so if you're single, that I mean, this is just open possibilities. Go on, write the book, write the page, write the story, whatever you want, blog. I don't know what I'm supposed to be saying for the online stuff, but you know, create your path. Like you can do this, whatever you want to do, 
you're capable of it and you know it and you're coming into this month knowing it and it's like clear it's clarity for you it's almost like Aries is breathing this air in and being able to just feel it in their lungs and know precisely what they want and where they're going and what they're seeking and now it is about seeking now it's about learning and it's weird like I just got this thing I say this thing because I have like a photographic memory that kind of shoots things across my head sometimes and so I'm seeing these words come out that say you know you're learning about yourself like you're you're finally figuring out who you are so that you can better figure out who you want it's it's also interesting because I haven't really brought up you dating a lot of people because I'm not really getting the feeling that you're dating a lot of people I get the feeling that you're like about to pursue it or you're on the cusp or maybe you've talked to a few people or you're getting your feet wet I mean I did say in the beginning that some of you are like changing directions but even if you are changing directions I think that's because you haven't gotten a lot of traction because you weren't quite sure and now I feel like you are sure and so I feel the next few months singles this is like your time this is you being able to you're gonna be truthful with yourself which then again puts you out in the universe getting the truth that you want from other people you're putting out what you want to get back whatever you put out will come back to you tenfold right so if you put out who you really are you're going to attract somebody who enjoys who you are who genuinely cares about who you are and that's so important and i just can't reiterate how much it means to be able to write your own story and create this future and that's what the page says it's a very positive thing um it's just an open page so go for it if you're looking to reconcile i really feel like aries i hate to say it that just don't concentrate on reconciliation write your own story too be single and include yourself in that group write your own, your own story because the page says that if you do go back to reconcile you're going to be seeking a lot of truth and clarity and i just get the feeling that some of you do not want to or you're not going to be able to handle it. it's not that you can't handle it aries, aries are very powerful people they can handle anything you just don't need to do that to yourself, really, do you? Do you need to go through that again? Do you need to put yourself through it again? Because there are very specific people out there who are going to be watching this, and you do not need to put yourself through that shit again. So if you have a wish to be trampled on and to find out every detail on stuff you really don't want to know, when you know that you could transform and be this amazing energy and let all of this shit go, that's up to you. But write your own story from here on out. Don't get nitty gritty with the truth. Don't find out who he or she was cheating on you with or doing whatever with. Move on. Move on. That's my suggestion on this one. The next card you have is the immediate future. So over the next few weeks and the next month or so, and you have the world, which is one of my favorite cards as well. The world is amazing. I mean, here, write your own story. Take your own road. Clear your own path. Do what you want. The world is yours. It's your oyster. Make it happen. This is about accomplishment belonging feeling fulfilled if you're single you're going to start belonging you're going to feel like you actually belong with somebody or you're worthy of being with somebody i don't know aries maybe my friend's mom's death has nothing to do with this but i'm telling you what some of you have had a shit month or two and i'm sorry for that but like you're finally going to feel like you belong somewhere that you're at peace and that you can accomplish anything and and it's also completion so it is like completing a cycle. The world is the end of the arcana, the major arcana, by the way. And death is like, you know, in the middle. Well, not exactly in the middle, but right there. And it's kind of like, you've, you're not this person anymore. Maybe you're growing up. Maybe you're whatever it is. You're coming into a new phase in your life and your immediate future is whatever you want it to be. And then your distant future is writing the story of your life make it the best one you can make it something you can tell your grandchildren i mean you know go ahead do it i don't know what you're waiting for i feel like some of you have held back long enough and it's time to start accomplishing things and completing like you have a bucket list do some of that stuff get it done take care of it do what you want i mean this is an open road what are you waiting for and you know what date invite somebody to do it with you and you know take little baby steps do things you've never done well great go online to a meetup group where they hike and where they climb mountains if that's what you want to do if you want to learn how to game game by all means go to a meetup group for whatever the gaming stuff is like 
this is your time, take it. And you're gonna meet some amazing people along the way. This is, again, a sense of belonging. And you're gonna finally feel like you fit into this world, you deserve the love and happiness, and you're gonna go get it. If you're looking to reconcile, I'm sorry. I feel it's exactly the same. I think like you need to choose a path, you need to take it. If you wanna reconcile, and it looks good and it feels good, go for it. If you're hesitant, create your own story, make your own path, take it. If that person is meant to be, they will come along on the path or they will find you at some point in the future. If they're not meant to be, you will travel the road and you will find what you're looking for. The next card you have is your external factors. So anything that could be coming up over the next few weeks, um, externally. So anything tangible that could be happening in you of the devil. All right. So this is going to be a few things. Um, this is vices, drinking, drugs, anything like that. So either you or I'm going to start with reconciliation. If you and your partner split because of something like that, they're still doing it and it's still going to affect you. So you need to take the open road and write your book. If this is you and maybe you did have something tragic happen, you need to seek help and you need to figure out a way to overcome it takes time. It's not easy. Um, but the devil being external doesn't necessarily mean drugs or addiction or vices, but it could be anything. It could be food. Maybe you did do like some sort of weight loss or something. And you know, maybe the goal was to get your ex back and maybe that's not what's happening if you're looking to reconcile. And therefore you might be tempted to turn back to food or deny exercise or go back into depression or anxiety. There's also jealousy fueled in the devil. And therefore you might be feeling these tinges of, I can't go on without him or her. I can't do this. Yes, you can, because everything else says you can. So do not fall back into this crap. If this has to do with you, if this has to do with somebody around you, you've got to get out of it because this whole thing is telling me that whatever you've been dealing with, you've been affected with enough and you don't need to be around toxic people. If you're single, I'm going to say the same thing to a certain extent. If you're having issues, you need to nip that in the butt because everything you're lined for is going to be ruined. However, I get the feeling for most of you, this is like somebody toxic or maybe the reason that you stopped dating the way you were or whatever is you're finding people who party too much or different things, or maybe you're an ex addict or an ex, you know, a recovering alcoholic or, or an ex drug addict. And so you need to steer clear of those people. So this is saying that if you have had a problem in the past, you need to make sure that you're keeping up with like-minded people. But again, it doesn't have to be substance abuse. It could be anything. I mean, it could even be sex addiction. It could be that maybe you were meeting men or women that it was more of a lust thing and you're realizing like, no, I need to get out of that. And maybe you're also realizing too, like, you know, that, um, it, I mean, this could be even work. So for singles, some of you were, I just get this clear picture of somebody like sitting there with the lamp on in the dark, like in the middle of the night, working, working, working. I mean, that can be an issue too. So whatever's coming around you that's toxic, be very careful and just steer clear of it. I know it's easier said than done, but you know who you are and you know what you need to do to keep all of this goodness and move on. All right. The next card you have is going to be future internal factors. So these are things that are going to raise awareness inside you. Um, mentally, etc. over the next few weeks, that will also help or hinder your outcome for the month. And you have the emperor. So this is kingship. This is authority traditional. So this right here trumps the devil by all means, because this tells me that if you are looking to reconcile and this is somebody you've dealt with that, you know, has major issues you're going to look right past it and say, nope, not happening. I'm writing my own book and I'm taking my own road. Thank you. Bye. And if you're single, this is you saying, I know what I want. I know who I want to be with. I want to be with somebody who's ethical and has morals and wants something good and wants something positive and bold. And you want something with a little structure and authority. This really tells me, Aries, that some of you have had some whirlwind crap happen. And you're kind of like, okay, here we are. I'm ready to do this. Like I want a mature adult relationship and I'm not buying into the crap that I've been letting kind of intercept my wavelength of positivity. And you're just not going to. So internally you're kind of like, nope, I've got this. Hey, 
I'm the king of my land. I'm the lay, you know, I've got the lay of the land. I know where I'm going. I know what I want because this future is just super exciting and nothing's going to crush it. The last two cards you have are um, your hopes and fears for the outcome of the month and your outcome of the month. So your hopes and fears are the six of cups and your outcome is the eight of cups. Okay. So the six of cups is about revisitation. It's about nostalgia. It's about childhood memories or things that have happened in your past, looking back, but focusing on the positive. So if you're single, this is you going, I remember a time when, but a happy time, right? So you're remembering a good relationship. Somebody who treated you well, it could be your parents' relationship, it could be an aunt and uncle's relationship. It could be something that you remember going, I wanted that when I was young and I'm hell bent on finding it. And it's a very positive, it, it's also, you know, memories as a child and things that you want to bring to a relationship going forward, things that made you feel good, happy times, and you're going to progress in that. And those are going to be the people you choose to date. That also tells me that some of you are looking very seriously at meeting somebody to marry and have babies with. So this tells me that you're kind of going, all right, now I'm looking at it differently. I don't want lust. I don't want to meet at a bar. I don't want to whatever. I want to actually meet somebody to settle down with and have children with. It's like you've turned a new leaf. Anybody looking to reconcile, you're going to revisit the good from your past relationship. But again, I'm not sure that you're going to be reconciling by the end of the month. I think maybe if there is a reconnection, you'll remember the good and focus on that instead of the bad. And maybe you've spent more time thinking about your ex in a negative way or harnessing the negativity instead of thinking about the positive. So this kind of tips the scales and tells me that maybe some of you will be giving it more of a chance or um, you're going to remember the good times and say, hey, you know, there were good times and I'll always cherish those, but I'm moving on. The outcome of the month is the Eight of Cups and the Eight of Cups is about moving, but it can also be about stagnation. So for singles, I feel like as your month revs up, right, as you start feeling amazing coming into the month, as you start seeing the capabilities, the possibilities, the things that are coming your way and things to look forward to, don't rush it. The eight says, look, things may not move as fast as you want, but you know you're going to get here, right? So don't push it. Don't push things or date people and be like, oh, he's the one, she's the one. It, let it come. Let it come slowly because if you don't, you won't be satisfied. This time you want to do it right, correct? This time you want to make sure you're looking at everything from the angle that you're coming into this month, rethinking and really being positive and knowing what you want. And so you've got to make sure that with this aid, you meet something, maybe you've already met them and you're just kind of like, come on, come on, come on. I know things could be really great. Don't do that. Don't rush it. You've spent time rushing. You spent time making the choices that you weren't always satisfied with. Let this time be the choice that you're happy with and let the universe or God or whatever you believe in help you with that. And don't force it. Allow it to, to, to move at its own pace because stagnation sometimes is a good thing because it allows you to enjoy things that maybe you were too busy and rushing before. For anybody looking to reconcile, um, you know what? Honestly, this says that if you are looking to reconcile, you're probably going to not be too happy with um, what you have or what you're finding out or the contact you're having because it's not going to move in the direction that you want it to. So if you're looking to reconcile, be very careful because I think the eight is going to warn that you're going to feel antsy. Like things should be progressing in a certain direction and they're not going to or it's not going to move as fast as you want. You're going to wind up in the very situation you're in and you're going to be dissatisfied. So make sure you're really careful of that. Okay, so really quick, I'm going to pull um, three clarifiers or whatever is kind of popped out. And there's one. Oh, there's two. So I'll just take the next one off the top. Um, so I used to read uh, regular, you know, poker cards, regular deck. And so I'm going to read your outcome. I'm going to clarify a little more. So this is your distant future, your immediate future, and your outcome for the month. So on your very distant future, so over the next few months or next few weeks, you have the four parts. And the hearts are always about emotion and how you feel and feeling good. And so the four of hearts is about, this can be about turning inwards, which is very interesting. It's about having apathy, but in a positive way. So it goes very well with the page of swords because 
the four of hearts is like saying I'm seeking, which is ironic because that's exactly what the, um, the page is doing. You're writing your own book. You're, you're reflecting on the inside, what you want on the outside. And that's super positive. So the four is like you're emotionally bound to yourself and you're emotionally bound to your story. So whatever you create, whatever's coming to the future, whatever you want to bring to fruition, you're going to be able to do. The next card you have um, on top of your world, which is your immediate future, is the Six of Diamonds. And the Six of Diamonds is about giving or receiving. It's, it's, so you could be thinking about it financially because a lot of times this has to do with like resources or money's on the rise. Um, but again, I think that goes well with the world, right? Whatever you put into the world, you're going to get back. Whatever you give to the universe, you're going to get back. Whatever you're seeking, you're going to get back. And so that goes immensely with the world. Whatever you put into this, whatever you make your story, you're creating your world. And you're going to get what you put out there. If you're negative and pissed off all the time, guess what? That's what you're going to get back. If you're happy, you know what you want and you're satisfied what the outcome would be if you stuck to that, then you're going to be happy. The next card you have is the Ten of Diamonds. And the Ten of Diamonds is um, a very interesting card as well because that's about wealth. That's about, um, it's very interesting. I mean, this could be cash flow, it could be inheritance, it could be money coming in, but that means that you're gonna be successful. So even if things don't move, right? You have this stagnant eight underneath you that is like not moving as fast as you want. Even if things aren't moving as fast as you want, the 10 assures you that whatever you're coming into is going to be good. It's going to be positive. It's going to be a payout. So be patient. Um, you know, take the time to enjoy and relish in the small things. Don't try and push it because the payout is going to be huge. Aries, this is, I think you're, you're going to have, and I really think good things are coming. For some reason, you're the sign to watch out for. For me, because things seem to kind of come into play when I'm trying to read for you, when I am reading for you, my cat's been bouncing around, bugs flying on the table. So whatever's going on, Aries, it's going to be positive. I can't wait to see what happens next month. I'll talk to you soon.